So when I was uh, little, I read in a newspaper somewhere that Graham Greene woke up every morning and wrote 500 words before 12, and then he hit the bottle of whiskey. Uh, I don't go down that far. I try and write 500 words in a normal sort of eight-hour working day. And I try to get around 500 words a day as well. After six or seven months of writing, uh, I have this massive panic attack that the house is going to burn down. By the way, I write longhand on paper, and the master document, the paper, is going to get burned. So I stay up for four nights, and I sort of type in my stuff. And that's a good edit stage. Yeah, the only sort of quirk in my process is I finish, you know, eat lunch, have the rest of my day where I do whatever it is I do. And then at night, I look at what I worked on in the morning. And then in the morning, I sort of look at what this fool in the night has yeah, done, yeah, yeah. and I clean up what he's the mess he's made, but it's a happy collaboration, you know. I, 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 I don't look at what I've written because if I do, I would never go forward with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm terrified of that. I know that there's an editor at the end of it who's going to fix it. Yeah. This time around, I found that I did get lost in the center part of the book. So I did something new, which was with a typewriter, I typed out every scene that I had, numbered it on three by five cards, and I made a big sort of... You could see the whole physical shape. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it was this big sort of circular mess. One, two, three, four, five, down two. And there was all these holes where I wasn't sure what was going to happen. It felt very much like um, an act of desperation. And I, you know, because I don't work in that way. So to do this, I thought, well, I must be failing. This book is getting away from me. But this is like, you know, before I give up, I'll see if I can't fix the problem in this and way. And fixed it. And I fixed it, yeah. Do you think you'll be doing it more often? When I don't you know. Reach this? <laughs> I don't know. I had, I had a feeling, I, I felt dirty when I was doing it. It felt like a trick or something, you know, like something you would learn in a, in an MFA program or something. and I felt you've taught this trick to me now, now I'm going to do it and feel dirty too. It works. It doesn't matter if it makes you feel dirty. It was, it was effective this one time. I don't know if I'd lean on it every time, but if I'm ever lost again, I would try it again. Um, so let's come to Walzer, because you have an epigraph from him. Yeah. It is a very painful thing having to part company with what tor torments you and how mute the world is, mm -hmm. exclamation mark. I love that exclamation mark. I do too, well. so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that it's, really it's makes it, it for me. It, it, this is one moment in, in, in uh, using that much abused thing, an exclamation mark, yeah. and it actually means something here. Yeah. Something about it, it's such a simple sentence, but it, it sums up so much for me about this story, but then also just... Um, but there's a gear shift in those, t in those two small sentences yeah. as well. Yeah. There is something wonderful going on, and then there's suddenly there's a slap of the philosophical observation and, and, and how mute the world is. Yeah, so... Where does it sit for you? Do, you? do you work in that way? Do you, do you find yourself rereading people that you have admired, or, or are you on the hunt for influence when you're working on a piece? Um, let me answer this question in a slightly roundabout way, which okay. is that, um, are you always sure what influences you? No. OK, you see, I feel influences happen at the level of an author's mind that sure he has no access to. Yeah. For, for the lives of others, the obvious person I was having a conversation with was Thomas Mann's Buddhist books, actually. Mm. But, you know, because I'm, I'm, because I'm an Indian, I'm, I'm automatically slotted into the kind of family saga writer territory. I, I often think if I were to write a novel set in Mars involving abstract thought molecules, people would read it as a family saga as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> we talked about subconscious influence. I found this thing happened right after I finished this book where I discovered Wa. I'd never read Evelyn Wa before. And I just thought, this is essentially exactly what I was trying to do. No, there's a, there's a joke that uh, David Lodge makes where he goes to a conference in California, and someone's writing a book about the influence of T.S. Eliot on Shakespeare, or the, the influence of Joyce on Shakespeare. Uh -huh. And it's all intertextuality, so it can flow in any direction. Yeah. So if Shakespeare influenced Joyce, why, like Joyce too influences Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, he, nice. he, he, has a, he has great fun with it. Can I pick up on two uh, interesting words that he used, uh, well-meaning and malicious? Yeah. Um, do you think Under Major Dharma Minor is a well-meaning and unmalicious book? Uh, it's certainly an aspiration of mine. Of, of the many things that, that, it, that the book is about, it's, it's about uh, love and its uh, 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 either redemptive or destructive capacities, or sometimes both together. Well, I... I... At the outset, I knew I wanted it to be a love story. I think I had it in my mind that it would be a, a, a much sweeter love story. It is a very sweet love story. Parts of it are, certainly. But then the other characters began to come into focus for me, and these are people who have been undone by love. Um, I began to think of the different types of love in my life and why some 
persevere and why some, some, some don't, why some, why, why some make it and why some, some vanish. My takeaway from the whole thing is, is just um, a recognition that love is obviously very powerful, but it's also something that isn't to be trifled with. It's something that's potentially very damaging and, and deadly even. Um, you also use deliberately archaic locutions like, does did he find himself plummeting again in love? And, 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 and I found this very endearing, actually. Um, I'm trying to get away from realist narratives and trying to write something that is totally exploded in the sense that the book is made of five parts and you can read the five parts in any order you want. And I feel that this may come in very useful. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs>